This video is sponsored by World of Warships. Have you ever wanted to be a doge? No, not that kind of doge. This kind of doge. Well, for a short while, I became a doge of Venetia and Europa Universalis 4 multiplayer game in the Gecko multiplayer mod. Yeah, that one mod that deletes most of Asia, including China. Social credit deducted. The main difference is, is that we have a completely new idea set, kind of similar to the Dalmatian idea set in Vanilla EU4. We also have a completely revamped mission tree made by the Twitch streamer Dumb Idiot. I'm not insulting him, that's actually what his username is. In the mission tree, we have the potential for plus one artillery fire, discipline, as well as multiple other bonuses and development, dev cost, economic, military, and of course monarch points. The main focus of the mission tree is actually outside of Italy, in the Balkans, as well as in Greece and Thrace. And although we have factions, we also have estates, and our government type works more closely to a normal republic. But we can still become a naval superpower in the Mediterranean, especially with the 20% galley combat ability and the other military and naval buffs inside our mission tree. Speaking about navy, that brings us right into today's sponsor, World of Warships. World of Warships is a naval shooter based in modern day warfare. It's free to play and it's available for PC. This game is constantly updated with top notch new graphics. There's more than 40 unique maps with dynamic weather that comprise World of Warships. There are multiple ship classes to choose from, and you can conquer the oceans aboard battleships, destroyers, aircraft carriers, or cruisers. Or if you're trying to be a sneaky beaky boy, how about a submarine? The game releases new content every month, whether it's new ships, in-game missions, cosmetics, or even ship classes. You can always count on enjoying fresh gameplay experiences in World of Warships massive 12 versus 12 arenas. And hey, if you're also a console gamer, this game is also available for console. You can download World of Warships using the first link in the description. If you use my promo code BRAVO, you can get some exclusive rewards for free. Now back to the video. Yeah, Alright, sure. so we're doing our opener real quick. Now starting in Italy has its upsides and its downsides. For pros, we do have a very highly devved area with many provinces and in North Italy, there's a lot of farmlands and flat terrain that are great for developing. Not only that, Italy of course is the center of the Renaissance, meaning that we're going to be one of the first nations that get the institution. The main downside is that we're essentially surrounded by players at every single angle. We share a direct land border with Milan, Austria, Hungary, and the Ottomans. But hey, as long as we stay kind and gentle with all of our neighbors, we can have a nice, peaceful, growing game where we develop and build up our nation for the first 50 years of the game with no war. We start with truces with Austria and Milan, and not only that, we start with an alliance with both Milan and Sicily. So even if either one wanted to attack us, they would need to wait five years or truce break. Surely the other Italians will be incredibly cute with me as we build up Italy into a prosperous and friendly area. Nah, just kidding, Milan is already trying to cut us off from Ferrara. And my disgruntled ass didn't even notice right away. As a matter of fact, I was still trying to gripe with reality as I had just woke up. To accommodate for the European gamers, we had started this game at 7am my time. So he gets day one claims on oh no, all of the neighbors. Please, and I don't. Skill issue. Unfortunately, at the time of recording, Milan for some reason got a lot more claims a lot faster than Venice, no matter what you do as Venice. I could cope about it or keep playing, and keep playing is exactly what we did. Our main objective was to consolidate the Adriatic Sea. Just kidding, I coped about it. And we get our claims, which already belong to Milan. What, what is this? All right, well, at least we can Let's reclaim Ragusa. Even though our expansion south was cut off by Ferrara, we still had some land from our vassals, as well as our one province in Ravenna, and we were able to do a show strength on Tuscany. So overall, we salvaged the start. I also at this point decided to unally Milan. It was very obvious from the way he was conquering land, he had vassalized both Ferrara and Mantua, that this guy was gonna play very aggressive. So I unallied him 
as soon as we could. Meanwhile, Sicily was conquering the south unhindered. Next on the list was to continue our expansion south by declaring war on the Pope. I really wanted the Pope to see our moves here and know that we are one of the superior Italians on the peninsula. Of course, the land we'll acquire in the peace deal is also pretty good. We also got news from Hungary that Milan was intending to declare war on us. I wasn't really surprised by it, but what was surprising was he was trying to get my ally Hungary to join against me. I also messaged the Sicily player to make sure that he wouldn't gank me while Milan was attacking me, because that would be a sure way to die. The truce with Milan was now up and he was coming to greet us. Let's see what he has to say. Oh. Yeah. Ravioli, ravioli, what's in the pocket only? Unsurprisingly, Milan declared war on us as soon as his truce was up. What was surprising was the amount of troops that he committed at the start of the war. You see, in Gecko, Milan and Venice are very similar when it comes to manpower as well as money. So the fact that Milan had almost 60k troops at the start of the war meant that he was pretty over force limit and he was expending a lot of money. Many players use this strategy to try to win as fast as possible. The way to counter this is to get as many troops as them and hope to win as fast as possible in the same manner because you also will be taking a lot of debt. I immediately made a mistake in this war by getting a merc stack on a province that Milan could easily walk to, getting a stack wiped, making us lose a lot of money. However, we had two distinct advantages in this player war. The first is that we were spending our mana better. We had tech 5 about a year and a half before Milan had tech 5. This means that we could get ideas and use that to our advantage in the war. The second distinct advantage we had were marines. Unlike vanilla, marines are actually very good in gecko as they take 10% less shock damage rather than taking 10% extra shock damage. It also gives us another manpower pool to use in our sailors. Of course, in the early game, shock damage is the main thing that causes damage in the battle phases. So these marines would actually be a vital part in taking less casualties. We were now losing 100 ducats a month, which seems like a lot, but considering Milan's troop count, he's probably losing the same, if not more. Milan smartly blocked us from being able to get to our fort, but Mantua being a flatlands, we took a battle there and we had a better maneuver general, which meant that we weren't taking the river crossing malice. We also had higher discipline and morale than Milan, winning us our first battle. I decided to skip the Mantua fort and went straight for Milana and Verona. The Milan player decided to engage us in his capital of Milan, which we were able to reinforce thanks to Brescia, but then the Milan player went for a cutoff, cutting our reinforcements. Without Mantua, I would constantly be able to get cut off while sieging down Verona or Milano. So I decided to go for Mantua, taking the battle, and Milan saw that, taking it and forcing us back again. I was playing too fast and I wasn't letting my troops recover. So I went on the defensive while our army morale recovered, which Milan instantly went running into our troops, but we were able to get a minus one and Milan retreated. With our troops nearly recovered, I went back on the offensive, taking a battle in Verona. Milan decided to use the strategy that he used to win the previous battle when I was sieging, trying to cut us off. But this time, since we had more combat width in Brescia, we were able to win the battle so fast that we were able to reinforce our main battle and win both battles. We then got one of the luckiest sieges that I've ever gotten at 14%, giving us the fort and giving us the river crossing bonus and an easy victory for Venice. We moved to his capital where Milan engaged us and with that, the final victory, he unconditionally surrendered, winning us the war.
And even though Milan bankrupted after the war, we were really close to bankruptcy. And I was really afraid that if we did bankrupt, that my coalition would fire from AI aggressive expansion or Sicily would attack us since we now shared a border. I now had the painful tax of trying to fix our debt issue without bankrupting. But this ended up being one of the first big mistakes that I made in this campaign. With our war with Milan over, this did not mean that we had the north secured. I had to take land in a certain way where I wouldn't get the entire HRE to hate me and have aggressive expansion. But here's the mistake. I either should have doubled down in the war and snaked out Sicily in the peace deal and kind of disregarding aggressive expansion as long as I don't bankrupt, or I should have done the peace deal I did then tried to get someone like France or Austria to guarantee me while I'm in my bankruptcy. However, in the moment, France was dealing with Burgundy and I felt like Austria wasn't friendly with me at all. So I didn't even try, which was a mistake. But now the new threat Sicily was now growing at a much faster rate as he had no debt and he was expanding where I couldn't. At this point, I was banking on one thing and that was that the Sicily player wasn't that good. I had no idea who this guy was though and I ended up being very, very wrong, as the guy was a very good player. It's really painful, like right now this is an absolutely painful game and I'm just waking up like, ha, ah, ah, ha, ah, who? So how did I recover? Well, the main thing was conquering and deving. Since for obvious reasons we couldn't really build that many buildings, I still was sprinkling in the church here and then later the workshop here and there, but we couldn't really build that much. So we had to use our monarch point generation from Republic as well as conquering whatever we could in order to scale as fast as we can. Meanwhile, our ally Hungary was having an even worse game being attacked from both Austria and Ottomans in a very disgusting fashion. But we had to focus on number one, us. And we were finishing ideas kind of to pace. The problem here was our idea picks themselves. Here was Big mistake number two. Instead of going for kind of a militaristic build, like an early game, mid game military build, or going for a very greedy economic build, I kind of went into the middle ground doing a kind of mercenary slash late game scaling build, which honestly, not the best build for this kind of situation. I either should have greeted really hard, went for an eco-heavy build to try to recover from my economy as fast as possible, and then tried to scale off that, or went for a military build focusing on trying to get the best military quality I could for the inevitable war against Sicily, because he's going to want to unify Italy at some point. Final stretch. I mean, I wanted to help this hungry, but you know, Milan was just so aggressive with his early game expansion, and of course, he decked on us. We knew he was gonna deck on us, which I prepared for. Truth is normal. They unallied. It's gonna out. happen. Yeah. Eighty-nine oh, chat. And to show you how far we descaled compared to to Sicily's, you can see that even at this point, years after the Milan War, I'm still paying a little bit of interest. Almost done, but still playing interest. Bro, this nation actually recovered, and so we we were this close bankrupt. to bankruptcy. This close! <laughs> now we were doing a lot of missions, we had no debt, and we were building buildings, but this only lasted for a short while. Of course, to make things worse, we disconnected due to internet issues, made the worst possible impromptu doge hat, possibly offensive doge hat. We then unfortunately desynced, but stayed in the lobby since you can still play, but. Sicily attacked and here's where the funkiness started happening troops started teleporting and In this battle that I'm about to show right here. We somehow lose despite having more troops and more morale and It was very very confusing, but it will make sense in a second Then I remembered I was desynced and that probably was causing the issue Just take a look at the map right here. Here's where we pause to rehost because I'm desynced Here's where we pause to rehost. I used all my troops in that battle, right? And I still have the fort in Padua and the fort in Brescia, okay? 
Now let's see what happens when we load back into the game after a rehost. My troops were still in Dalmatia and the Padua fort was now in Two Sicilies hand just all of a sudden. So I tried to reason with Two Sicilies. We agreed that he would mothball Padua so I could take it back. But the dude just ended up rushing the fort as soon as I got off Padua which uh, basically put us in the same position that we were already in. It just worse because our troops were in weird formation. And because of the situation, I was just losing a war after recovering for so many years. I was just now losing a war because of this issue. Most likely, I would still probably lose this war because Two Sicilies was stronger than me. But the way that I lost this war was just so depressing and the guy was just so BM and I didn't know what to do without seeming like a power hungry discord mod. So I just took the L and ended up losing to two Sicilies even after the France player who really wanted me to stay ended up helping but his u troops were just so weak for some reason. Overall really poopy way to lose and I just left it at that. And honestly at this point I didn't even really want to play the game anymore uh, but I got convinced by my chat as well as the Ottoman player to keep playing. Ottoman said that they would help me in the next war since Two Sicilies was now expanding into Egypt. But Ottomans kind of got too busy fighting a really strong Ethiopia which he ended up losing to. And that was that. That was the end of the campaign. I ended up getting killed by Two Sicilies and Swabia came in for the Vulture. You might be thinking, why would you even put this video on YouTube, this campaign on YouTube? I think the first war on Milan was a really good showcase on the early game death wars. I really hate early game death wars because you always get put in awkward positions even if you end up winning the war. And also kind of like a lesson for me because even without the desync issues, I think the winning a 1v1 against Sicily in the state that we were was kind of unlikely. I think that if we had the forts, we had a better chance or if we weren't desynced, we would have had a better chance, but we'll never know. I think I didn't do the right build and I didn't do the right play immediately after the war. But because of this campaign, we got this amazing clip that I would love to share with you guys. That's it, chat. This is me right here. My chatouts take arms with me. We may lose Venice, but they will never take our soul. Fight! Fight, men! That's the end of this campaign. Put this one into the failed campaigns folder, which you can find the playlist in the description for all my lost campaigns. If you're a Habibi hate watcher, that's exactly the videos you want to watch. You can just watch me straight losing consistently. But yeah, you can't win them all. And that's totally fine, guys. You go into EU4 MP, going in with no expectations, and just playing the game, going with the flow. As a matter of fact, I say this all the time on my stream, going in with like basically like a campaign goal, or trying to do something from the start of the game, is a bad idea in multiplayer. When things go bad in multiplayer, you just start in the game, and either you can quit or keep playing. And if you're a quitter, I mean, I'm just sorry. You're just a... Uh... Ah. But now that we were dead, we could safely leave the campaign, and we left on a high note. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you, World of Warships, for sponsoring this video. Check out the game in the link description, guys. It'll be worth it. Uh, use my code BRAVO to get a bunch of bonuses on your new account.